Lately, I've been into Queens of the Stone Age. Today. Oh my god, what is that? Oh my god! What is that? And the most recent album I listened to was Villains. I began listening to it during my commute, so I wasn't done with the album by the time I reached my destination. When I went to pause the album, I looked at its information on Spotify. As I got to the bottom and saw the song count, I immediately thought, Oh, thank goodness, there are only nine songs. Wow! Now I had to wonder why I thought that. At that point, I was four songs in, and I liked every one of them. So this really wasn't because I disliked the album and wanted to be done with it. But where did that relief come from then? I quickly came to the main argument of this video. Shorter albums are better than longer ones. An album that cracks out at 35 to 40 minutes is superior to an album that cracks out in an hour. Obviously, there's wiggle room and leeway here, and I'm not trying to argue that albums in general are longer now. This short essay is just a suggestion for bands, producers, and the like, who will most likely never watch this video, that bigger is not always better. And I've got three main reasons to support my argument. Reason 1. Assurance of quality over quantity. I can't tell you how many times I've listened to a decent record only to have it ruined by an influx of too many songs. A good example, and one that you hear metalheads talk about a lot, is Metallica's Hardwired to Self-Destruct. It has some great tracks, but its total length is 12 songs for 77 minutes, over an hour and 15 minutes. The most common complaint about this album is that it has some awesome songs, but there are just too many mediocre ones among them. People would rank it higher if it wasn't so darn long. Now, two counter-arguments to the complaints about albums being too long are 1. You don't have to listen to the whole album in one sitting, and 2. If the songs are good, then you shouldn't complain about length. Anthony Fantano summarizes these two ideas in his When is an album too long video. He describes the idea of prioritizing what you want to do. Whether that is, listen to an album, or perform another activity like read, work out, or make a low-effort video essay that no one is going to watch. I completely agree with this idea. You should do what you feel like and not turn listening to music into a chore. However, my argument is that a shorter album is more likely to ensure that the songs have better quality. You're putting your best of the best out there. Music journalist Paul Cantor talks about this in his article about ideal album lengths. Before the rise of digital music, space was limited on vinyls, cassettes, and even CDs. You couldn't make albums longer than about 45 minutes to an hour without multiple discs or other mediums. In this sense, quote, every track really counted. There was no filler, unquote. Even if the album was long and I wanted to listen to it in more than one sitting, I'd rather listen to a bunch of shorter, good albums than one giant one. Also, adding more tracks just feels like a lazy move, for the most part. From the longer albums I've listened to, not counting a constant album like The Wall, I haven't seen an album where it looked like they just had so many good songs and just had to squeeze them all in. Rather, it just seems like they were throwing in whatever extra songs they had. Hey, we got this track and it's like, okay, so let's just toss it in! And another thing that's tangentially related, I really don't like deluxe and expanded editions of albums. This might just be me, but when I get an album, I really just want to listen to the core stuff on there. If you got some live tracks on there, that's okay, but I'd generally rather prefer a separate live album rather than have it stitched on to the end of an album I actually want to listen to. The one thing I strongly dislike are the demo versions of songs. Okay, this demo of Peace Cells is kinda cool, but I will probably just listen to it this once and not again. Please stop putting the demos on deluxe versions, I beg you. I'm only complaining about deluxe and expanded albums because in some cases these are the only versions that get made anymore. Like Warren Zevon's Excitable Boy album. On Spotify, the only Excitable Boy available is the 2007 remaster. It's not the worst, but it bothers my monkey brain. Reason 2. It supports people's attention spans. I know that exposure to overstimulating amounts of technology decreases human attention spans, and, as I said earlier, people don't have to listen to a whole album in one sitting. However, making a shorter album allows people to absorb more of the music rather than a long album. In my experience, I've sometimes had to listen to a song twice over to recognize its value. This tends to happen with albums that are longer than about 35-40 minutes. Even if you want to listen to something in a different session, keeping tracks limited to certain time frames is going to help that absorption. And again, to counter argue that this is just a consequence of people's shortened attention spans, I will raise you Sir Walter Scott's book, Ivanhoe. Most of the chapters are divided into about 10 to 14 pages each, which makes them easily consumable for a casual reader. And this book came out in 1819. So yes, shorter albums will be easier for the modern listener to CONSUME! Reason 3. Shorter albums compel people to seek more. That feeling when you end a really great album can be one of exhilaration, but also sadness. Like you just wish you had more, right? Now, I'm sure you album lovers out there wanted to listen to another album by the same artist after, right? It only makes sense. Having an album that's the perfect length where people enjoy it but want more is the best business model you can have. In this day and age where people are, as Paul Cantor described, overwhelmed with options, companies are now fighting for consumer attention more fiercely than ever. This is obviously a very tough fight considering a lot of people are content to listen to the same songs, not even the same artists, over and over again. 
However, considering the artists that managed to make names for themselves in the past couple years, it's not impossible. And that's my mini essay about album length. I think shorter is just more satisfying and, like I said, it ensures quality. Most of my favorite albums are about 8 songs or no more than 45 minutes in length. This isn't always the case, but like a lot of films and other pieces of media, getting to the point is usually the best thing you can do. That's a nice argument, Senator. Why don't you back it up with a source? My source is that I made it the fuck up! Hey guys, so I made this video since the topic was on my mind, and I wanted to make a short and sweet piece that didn't require much research before I finish a really big video that I'm currently working on. I'm not even finished with the script, and it looks like it's going to be at a bare minimum about two hours long. It is an iceberg video, and I'm trying to go as in-depth as I can, which is why it's taking so long. But once I'm done, I will link it in this little ending bit here, so I hope to see you there.